welcome. I'm sorry, there's, there's too much going on in the, the house at the moment, so I'm, I'm sort of traipsing around looking for... Anne, you're mute. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, there's, there's a little bit going on in the house at the moment that everyone seems to be having, uh, needing space. So I'm, I'm now tucked away in my, in our bedroom. So, <laughs> but oh, I, I received the most extraordinary email yesterday with just, um, dear Anne, thought you would really enjoy this, and and then a, like a screenshot attached to the email. It's from a student in Kentucky, um, a student who does uh, acupuncture on horses. And um, that's got nothing to do with the content of the email, but I, I was so excited to receive it that I thought that, um, that I should read it, if that's okay. And it goes like this. It's from, um, it's from a book called When Drummers Were Women which I don't know anything about that book, but just in case you're wondering where it comes from, when drummers were women. And it says, it is often said that the first sound we hear in the womb is our own mother's heartbeat. But actually the first sound to vibrate our newly developed hearing apparatus is the pulse of our mother's blood through her veins and arteries. We vibrate to that primordial rhythm, rhythm even before we have ears to hear. Before we were conceived, we existed in part as an egg in our mother's ovary. And here's the interesting part. All the eggs a woman will ever carry form in her ovaries while she is a four month old fetus in the womb of her mother. This means our cellular life as an egg begins in the womb of our grandmother. Each of us spent five months in our grandmother's womb and she in turn formed within the womb of her grandmother. We vibrate to the rhythms of our mother's blood before she herself is born. Well, I was so taken with this passage and of course it immediately explained spleen four because we have to remember that um and this may be controversial and my my zoom has already gone out today after i said a, a certain word this may be controversial but um the, see, I'm not supposed to say it because it's just gone from my head. But, oh yes, that's what I was going to say. They're not going to beat me. I'm going to say it. So um, we have to remember that our own medicine, Chinese medicine, is so profound. It's so, it has the answers to everything. And the only limitation on it is our own consciousness not so much even our knowledge, but just our ability to tap into it and to be in a meditative state as we're thinking about our own medicine. But suddenly, the, the term, um, the name of spleen four, grandparent, grandchild, suddenly that makes a tremendous amount of sense. When you are uh, treating the constitution through the chong, you're focused on your grandparent and your grandchild. You're not focused on your mother, which you would think is where you inherited it from. So you, you're going back into, you know, when the, the, the Taoist notion of when, uh, when we heal anything, when we heal anything, we're healing it all, for all generations, prior and future. And so, um, so the point spleen four, you know, now it, to, to me it becomes even more potent that 
it, when we go into the Chong through Spleen 4, we're not only healing um, two generations hence, we're, we're treating two generations going forward and that's where I want to focus. And of course, we're not literally talking about um, reproduction. Whether it's, it's not literally talking about you know creating another human being, but the vibration going forward. And so I thought um, that to use the point grandparent grandchild spleen four um, with to create a, and I have the second point in a moment. I I don't have it right now, but it'll come and. The ripple that we would be creating would be for a shift in consciousness that would be firmly planted two generations forward but also two generations back and that will change or will set our generation in a kind of a pivot so if we want to create this very deep constitutional change um, in to put this shifting consciousness in the context of Chiang Mai I think would be very very powerful and the second point what well, you know the second point that I want to use is um, kidney 21 but I hesitate because I don't want you to be be bored because we've done, <laughs> I think we've done this you know quite a few times you're smiling so I don't think you're too bored right with okay so <laughs> so kidney sometimes we have to repeat treatments right We'd have to repeat the treatment, Jen? Sometimes. Yes, sometimes we do. But hopefully whenever we re repeat a treatment, um, it's coming through with a different, there's a different spin on it. So you could needle, sorry, I'm being blinded by this light here. So, so you could do, you could treat um, the same channel, you know, 28 times and have a completely different spin on the exact same points. And I think um, that's part of what uh, Ripples is about, I think, is to to see the channels like almost through a prism. So, you, wow, you hold it, hold the channel at this angle and look what it does. It's a completely different color. And and uh, anyway, I'm talking too much, but there's the, the second point, mysterious gate, um, ties back to yesterday's ripple when we were talking about the any notion of the future that we hold in our mind is sheer fantasy we don't even know what the next moment will be so the ripple we would be putting out into the the the, the pond would be one of um like almost i don't mean this in an arrogant way but tremendous power there's tremendous power in holding the notion that we can shift consciousness in for all time. So um, thanks so much for being here. And let, let's have a crack at that one. <laughs> I'm very happy that you're here. Okay, let's get to work. Is the picture better on the iPad? This is an iPad now, not my computer. It's a better picture, okay.
thanks for being here everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.